go to Google and follow along with my voice. Uh, Google Apache HTTPD on that first hit, click download. Under stable look releases, when you're at httpd.apache.org, uh, click the first top stable release. Uh, then on the division that you're brought to, choose the Win32 binary install without crypto. Uh, that'll, inst that'll get you downloading a .msi file. So download that thing, pause this thing, and wait for it to download. Then kind of install Apache. It goes without saying most of the stuff. Type in omg.com when it asks you network domain and omg.com and then just fill in a bunch of BS. Then choose typical install, next, next, install, blah, blah, blah. While you're installing Apache server, go ahead and uh, Google MySQL and download MySQL. This is uh, how our web server is going to store all the data. So after you've Googled for MySQL, you can go ahead and click the download link of the first hit. On the MySQL page, there's an image front and center that says MySQL installer. Download that beta. We'll later install it. Eventually, your Apache server will finish installing on your system. And you can go ahead and click finish. And now, voila, you should be able to go open up a web browser and type in HTTP colon, slash, slash, it's the one near the shift key, localhost, uh, no space, and hit enter. And you should be greeted with a wonderful uh, web page that says, it works, exclamation point. This means your, your Apache server is actually working. You could view the source of this web page and you'll see, yeah, it's, sure enough, it's a perfect HTML page. But where is this page on your computer? After you installed Apache server, something called httpd.exe uh, be, became running, is now running on your computer. And it is actually exposing a directory on your, on your hard drive to the web via HTTP. So you can browse to that folder and you can see the contents of that folder as a web page. So if you put web pages in that folder, you'll be able to browse to them with a web browser. Let's go to this directory right now. Open up my computer, go into the C drive, choose program files. Okay. Apache Software Foundation slash Apache 2.2 slash htdocs. If you go into that htdocs folder, uh, you will find yourself an index.html, which automatically gets presented to the web browser when you dial in localhost or HTTP blah, blah, blah. You can make changes to that index.html if you want. Change it to say, instead of it works, to it works okay dot, 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 if you would like to. And uh, test that out in your little web browser. Go ahead. After you finish testing that out, um, make a, a new test.php in that htdocs. And to do this, of course, right-click in that directory, that htdocs directory, uh, m move your mouse down to New, and choose New Text Document, and then rename it to test.php instead of new document.txt. And, uh, in, it, and right-click this thing and open it with Notepad. And then the first thing you type is uh, less than sign question mark php. That's that first line. Then hint enter, 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 enter. Then uh, your next line should say echo, E C H O, space, uh, quotation mark, uh, hello, or whatever string you want to put in here. Close quote, semicolon, hit enter, enter, enter. Then do question mark, greater than symbol. Okay, save this file that you've just made and now browse to it by going to localhost slash test.php. Depending on what web browser you have, you might need to dial in the HTTP colon slash slash localhost. But uh, anyway, try to go to test.php, localhost slash test.php, and you'll find uh, it looks ugly. It, it shows you everything. It's, it's not supposed to show you the uh, less than sign question mark PHP and the echo part. It's only supposed to show you the strings. So right now, get back into Google. Google for PHP. And on that first hit, 
click the uh, download link, and that'll take you right to the good stuff. Now on the page that shows up, at the very bottom of it, you'll see a division with the header Windows Binaries. You don't want source code, you, you do want those binaries. So click the link within that division, and that will take you to a download page. And in the second division down, you'll see the thread safe area, and click the uh, installer there to uh, to download the installer, the .msi file. And that's what will get you PHP installed on your system. Uh, feel free to pause this thing and wait for it to download. And I apologize in advance. If you're watching the video, it's not going to show you the same procedure. Um, whatever. You'll get it. You'll get it figured out. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, by now, you've paused this thing, hopefully, and then you can start installing. And once it does get installed, uh, rewind just a bit and look at the visual that I'm showing you. Or just listen. The first time it shows you that huge list of radio icons, choose the top one, Apache 2.2 module. At one point, you have to actually find that config file. You'll have to go to Apache Foundation, blah, 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 then go into Apache 2.2, and then go into a conf file and point it to that configuration file. But that's the only tricky thing, really, that you have to do. Then you're just clicking Next. Now pause the thing and uh, for it to install, and then I'll continue talking. Do, do, do. Okay, now once it's completely installed, uh, I'll go to localhost and try to go to that test PHP. Go to localhost slash test.php. You'll find that it doesn't work. That's because you actually have to restart your Apache server. In the lower right hand corner of your screen, you'll have a new little tray icon with looking like a feather on it, maybe even a leaf. Left click that thing and stop your server and then start it again. Uh, once you stop and start it, uh, you should be able to go to test, localhost slash test.php, hit enter in your web browser, obviously, and uh, you will be shown just the string and not, not the less than or greater than sign. And if you're having troubleshooting issues, look at the visual right now. It's showing you what to do. You should have that thing uh, <laughs> in your uh, conf file for Apache, and that'll link Apache up with your PHP thing. Uh, it's supposed to automatically do this in the installer. Sometimes it forgets, so you'll have to manually put it in there, but usually you're just good to go. Now, <laughs> you're going to have to bear with me now if yours totally works after you restart Apache, uh, and it shows you just the string, and it's not showing you that less than sign with the question mark and the PHP and all that stuff. It's just showing you like PHP is installed or whatever your string was. Uh, might have to consult the visual if it's still not working. Uh, you're you're going to want to see the source code. Um, okay. If you look at the visual right now, it's going to take you to uh, some other address where it tries to install some kind of a debugger. I don't know what this debugger is, so I'm not really going to go into too many depths to show you uh, how to install it. But I already recorded the video. So go to Google and let's let's get this downloaded. Go to Google and search for xdebug. That's all one word, xdebug. Hit enter to search and your first hit is going to have a, a little sub link. Click that sub link for downloads. Click downloads on it and then you'll be brought to the xdebug page. Scroll down there and you'll find yourself to 2.1.1 or whatever the freshest one is. Go to that freshest one and download the one for the PHP version you downloaded. And we downloaded PHP 5.3 VC6 ThreadSafe TS. And we downloaded the 32-bit one. So click that link, download, xdebug. Come on, click and uh, save that thing to your desktop. And then you're eventually going to want to... All right, uh... Uh, pause, pause while it's downloading, or move that file to uh, C drive, uh, program files, um, PHP, oops, <laughs> PHP, and then drop it into that PHP folder. Okay, paste it into that PHP folder, and then you should have in your PHP folder PHP underscore xdebug dash 2.1.1 dash 5.3 dash vc6.dll. It should be in there. 
open up php.ini, scroll to the bottom of that thing, and type after me. Xdebug, which is one word, dot remote underscore host equals 127.0.0.1. And then your next line is xdebug dot remote underscore port equals 9000. Hit enter. xdebug dot remote underscore handler equals dbgp. All right, that should be at the bottom of your uh, php.ini file. And right above that new chunk that you added, I in insert these two lines as well, uh, above that chunk. Zend, Z-E-N-D, underscore extension, equals, and then uh, within quotes, direct it to the path of your... Uh, your x your new xdebug.dll file okay pause this video or we'll get out of sync okay and and paste in the path to that new xdebug.dll that you just downloaded and then on the line below type xdebug.remote underscore enable equals one i'm going to actually talk about details about php what is php well it lets you do math in an html page you know, you couldn't, well, you could do math in an HTML page with JavaScript, but you couldn't interact with a, a server's machine. Like with PHP, you can actually write to the hard drive of the server. That's cool. With PHP, you can actually read an MS, MySQL file. I, I mean, from a MySQL database. That's super cool. That's like the main reason we're using PHP. Another cool feature that PHP brings to your web page is um, you can pass arguments to your PHP script, your PHP program. You couldn't do that with just HTML. But by arguments, I mean, you, you know Google, when you search for something, have you ever looked at the address bar after you search something? It's all messed with uh, like a question mark sign and equal signs and ampersands, and it's just a mess. Those are parameters being passed to uh, your, your search.cgi on Google. Uh, and PHP lets you do that same kind of thing, you know, where you could say, uh, you could go to localhost slash test dot PHP question mark, and then parameter one equals blah, blah, blah. And that would make your parameter one, uh, blah, blah, blah. And you can get that parameter from within your PHP program. And that gives you a lot of versatility. Okay, by now, <clears throat> hopefully, MySQL has finished downloading. You probably got it from mysql.org or whatever their site is. Run that sucker, and it's just kind of default pretty much all of the options. It'll, you'll click Next, you'll agree to some stuff, click Next, and it'll be a cinch. Choose a cool MySQL root password, just in case. Uh, and uh, install that sucker, okay? You're mostly defaulting all the options. There's nothing too complicated in there uh, at all. Um, once you have MySQL installed, hit and hold Windows key, then hit E. That'll open up an Explorer. Go to C Drive, Program Files, x86 if that's your thing, MySQL, uh, MySQL Workbench 5.2, and that's where a lot of your stuff is going to be stored for MySQL. And in that directory, that Workbench directory, go to mysql.exe, run that sucker in a command line. Uh, you can do that by copying what's in your address bar for your file explorer in your buffer. Hit and hold uh, Windows key and then R, then type CMD, then hit enter. It opens up a command box. Then type CD space, quote mark, then paste in what's in your uh, clipboard, then close that quote, hit enter, then type mysql.exe, and then boom, you're uh, in the MySQL console. Hit exit to get out of there. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, one thing that might make your life a lot easier is if you add MySQL to your environment path. That's just something to consider. But to test MySQL, open up mysql.exe, then type show databases semicolon hit enter and that'll show you all of the databases within your mysql uh, server 
you can thereafter type use and the name of one of those databases uh, and end that line with a semicolon and that'll jump you into that database then you can type show tables uh, semicolon and it'll show you all of the tables within that database mysql is cool you won't usually operate it this way you'll use php uh, that pretty much does it for this tutorial hope this helps